What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening as a form of mental health therapy, alcohol addiction recovery, and ADHD life skills and all the above. And welcome to the flower draft picks for 2023 garden season. I asked this question around my social media. I asked it on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And a lot of people have commented me a few of these things, a lot, you know, a lot of these flowers already. So I'm gonna be, you know, a lot of those suggestions have been incorporated into this list as well. Yep, you guessed it, I'm getting into beekeeping because why not? And also, I really need good garden pollination. And frankly, there is a decline in bee population and I'm not feeling it, especially when you're looking for main staple crops and all the above, we rely heavily on bees. So that means get into beekeeping, but that also means what are they gonna be eating? And that brings me to the flower draft of 2023. What in the world are we gonna be picking for flower options and choices? For the beginning of the year now i do have summer and fall flowers on lock that is not a problem but the beginning of the year the beginning of the season i should say beginning of the garden season this is where we have or i have come across that problem so the question is what kind of plants are we going to be growing that will bloom in the springtime i'm talking march april and a little bit of the beginning of may everything from there on bees start to show up but the thing is that I'm concentrating on springtime. So let's get to the list. Let's get started. What are the top picks for this year's draft? It is the standard classic spring flowers of the crocuses, the daffodils, and the tulips. Those are some beautiful flowers and those definitely tell that spring is coming. They're always popping up out of the ground and the beautiful thing about them is that they're perennials. So you could just plant them one time and then they keep going. I doubt the crocuses are perennials. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments below, but I definitely know the daffodils and tulips, and you can definitely count for those lilies. Lilies are one of my favorite plants. So day lilies, regular oriental lilies, those are gonna be some wonderful, definitely the first picks because they are definitely dependable, reliable, and perennial. So you don't really have to do any work for you because they're gonna be popping up out of the ground right in the springtime. Also in those first draft picks, we're going with pansies because pansies also grow and flower in the springtime and those are kind of beautiful and I do have some nice varieties that I want to try out. So pansies is also in the first draft pick for the classic winners. And I just so happened to order a boatload of new seeds for this year and that includes a lot of flower seeds. If you have any special flowers that you like to grow in zone 6A and B, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to know what are you growing for this spring season. The list is very long, so I'm going to be maybe naming not everything because there are a lot, a lot of flowers like runner ups. I have a lot of daisy seeds. Now the thing about daisies is that they do bloom in the spring but they are late spring bloomers. Rudbeckias, those are all some beautiful flowers that do, I believe, flower in the early springtime. So check out those too. You also have ranunculuses. These bloom in late spring, so you gotta be careful as to when you're planting a lot of these flowers. Another late spring bloomer, but they bloom. Delphiniums, those are some awesome ones, and some of them are actually perennials as well. When it comes to round two, which means the second draft picks, let's just say the first ones are all gone. You have no access to daylilies, tulips, or crocuses, or pansies, something like that. Never fear, because these second runner-ups are as awesome, and they definitely spring, you know, well, they bloom in the springtime, and they're just as good as the first ones. So don't get it twisted, okay? So if you can only find these, good to go. You have peonies, you have snapdragons, you also have gardenias. Those are supposed to be blooming in springtime too. You also have zinnia options. I do plant them and they do flower in the summertime, but depending if you start them early, maybe you can get them in the later springtime. I forgot all about petunias. Those can be a really, really great flower. I hope I mentioned calendulas. I actually bought a bunch of these, some more different variety calendulas, but these are great and they are frost hardy also. The list of flowers is really, really long. So, I mean, don't be discouraged. If you can't find the first draft pick, cool. You got the second ones. Those are really awesome. Now these third tier draft picks are going to be really awesome. But the reason why they're the third is because they may bloom a little later than March and April. You're going into the April, May, you know, time of the season. So if you're looking for something a little later into the springtime, 
you may want to check out these. And the first one, of course, is milkweed. I already got milkweed on deck, so I'm hoping that that would really help and that it attracts a lot of pollinators, not necessarily just bees. You have butterflies, you have moths. All of those are really, really attracted to the milkweed, so that's an awesome pick. Don't ever sleep on dandelions. I know some consider them weeds, but they flower and the bees love them. So, hey, dandelions are the way to go. You also have bee balm, cone flower, and black-eyed Susans. Yo, the list is really, really long. Now, lavender must be a great one. I have yet to try lavender, but guess what? No time like the present to try some lavender. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you grow lavender? And how hard is it? Because I heard that it can be a little on the finicky side. If you do ever manage to grow some lavender on your own, man, not only do they smell good, look good, but they attract a lot of pollinators. So no time like the present to try that out. You're probably asking yourself, Jack, you gave me all flowers. I can't eat most of them. You can't eat some, but you can't eat most. So what are we talking about veggies? All right, what can we pick? We've covered actual flower flowers, but is there any flowers that we can have in springtime that would actually lead to some kind of fruit or food or something really, really edible? And that is the number one draft pick with flowers that you can also eat at the same time is peas, sweet peas. Those flowers, not only are the pollinators gonna be able to get them, but it's gonna produce a pea, a sugar snap pea, or any other type of pea variety, and you get to eat them too. So not only are your bees happy, you're happy as well. Another option is uh, the flower, which is also oddly happens to be edible, is the nasturtiums. Nasturtiums. Some people can enjoy them for their garden flowers. Uh, some people actually eat them. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't quote me on that. Google it. But I believe that you can eat them. All right. Just saying. But also, you know what I heard? That you can actually eat marigolds. Now, I don't know about the whole eating of marigolds one, but you can definitely grow them suckers. Those things, I grow marigolds every year. So there are a lot of options when it comes to growing, you know, flowers all up in your garden. You know, I forgot to mention the poppies. These actually, I believe they bloom early spring. They are frost hardy. So you can actually try to check them out and see if it works. Because if we want bees, we need bees. We want bees. We need the bees for pollination. Then we're really going to have to attract them, get a lot of flowers into our garden for this year. Hopefully with me buying them and them bees being on my property, which I have no idea how my neighbors are going to react because I live in town. So I got a lot of houses close to me, but nobody has to know. Nobody's going to know. How is anyone going to know that those are my bees? Well, guess what? I don't really know, but you know what? This year is going to be all about bees. So I'm going to be excited and interested to know how is it actually going to work out? You know what? A city gal getting into bees. Why not, right? I'm embracing the country life or I'm embracing town woodsy life. You know what I mean? So that involves some bees. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any flowers that I've missed, if you have any edible flowers that I've missed, anything that can grow in the early springtime for my bees because I'm in the process of ordering my seeds right now. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you really got some good information out of it. Don't forget you can catch me on TikTok because that's my uh, alcohol sobriety journey going on there. Also, I'm on Instagram and definitely you can catch me on Facebook because I am legit on Facebook all the time. Until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check y'all later in the next episode. Peace and love.